Hey everyone, it's been a while. I thought I'd do a nice chill, paint over, talk over type of thing for this video and uh, try to speak in a more calming voice. That way you guys are less inclined to cancel me for talking about NFTs. <laughs> so before I get started, I just want to get it clear the point of this video. Um, I want to speak to digital artists like myself when it comes to NFTs. I think this is uh, something that needs to be done and a lot of other artists are doing it which I'm really happy to hear um, but I want to warn as many people as I can about this crazy hype that's going on about NFTs and I've done a lot of thinking about it I've done my own research and heard a lot of other opinions and I have come to my own opinions that I really want to share so I'm gonna be honest I'm not the smartest person when it comes to all this stuff I'm just going to give you a really, really simple rundown of what NFTs are. I'll try to link in the description some other videos to look at. But in the most basic way, NFTs are simply a way for artists to now sell original copies of digital content. It doesn't even have to be digital art. It can be a screenshot. It can be a video. It can be anything that is just digital that can be copied and otherwise doesn't have a way to be original. Now, the most important thing about NFTs is the one really big positive that I want to talk about, and that is that it is finally given digital artists pretty much equal footing, at least conceptually, to traditional artists. This is because there's really only five ways to sell your artwork as an artist. There's two ways to sell your personal work, and then there's three ways to sell your work in terms of doing things for others. So the first way is to sell your original artwork. You paint something that you want, you draw something that you want, then you give it to somebody who wants to pay for it, and then that's it. There's no more. The second way is to just sell copies of that, whether it's the prints or the merch, you put it on cups, you put it on clothes, whatever, it's copied versions of it, and you can decide how many are released. The third way, now we're getting into things that people do for others, is going to be doing commissions. So somebody asks you, hey, draw my boyfriend, it's his birthday, draw my girlfriend, it's her birthday. Those are the things I got a lot, so those are the <laughs> those are the examples I'm using. And then you draw it, and then you pay them. I mean, they, they pay you. Make sure you get paid. All right, don't, don't do it the other way around. Get paid first, and then they get the artwork, and then that's it. The fourth way is to do freelance. So some company or organization might hire you to do a specific painting for a more, you know, something bigger or a little bit of a gig. Maybe they want you to design a character really quick for um, a game they're developing or something. There's all kinds of different things, but they're usually much more. They usually pay you a lot more uh, and they usually have a much more serious concept and an idea of what they want. And then the fifth way is to enroll in or sign up to be in a permanent position at a studio of some sort. Usually this can be years, several years long, your whole career, or it can just be um, a few months long. But basically, you'll be doing a certain job during a certain project, and you'll be usually locally at that place. Now a lot of people are doing, you know, stay at home and working remotely. Uh, but usually it's going to be something that you'll be doing for a while, and you'll be doing a certain task, um, not necessarily specific to one character or one game or something. What NFTs have done, now that we're back, is given digital artists a way to do the first way to sell your artwork, which is to sell originals. Because as I'm sure you are aware, there's no way to sell an original copy of a digital art piece because as soon as you do it, it's copied. There's there's no way to really sell an original because when you move something or give something to someone, a computer always makes a copy of it. You would have to somehow get people to trust you that you'd deleted everything originally if you were to do that but the other person could still make copies so in and of itself it's just impossible to have original forms of digital media until now with nfts basically if you're wondering how that's possible it's that there's a kind of list a global list and record of an item that can be proven and can be seen by everyone so that's kind of how this a really really dumbed down version like i said i don't i don't really know all the details of all how nfts work but that's really how it is it's part of the blockchain market which is just based off of lists and that's how you can prove a certain digital media is original now let's get into why i want to make sure that you're wary of it a lot of people are building a lot of hype for this and it's kind of it's it's really misleading and i wish more people would be aware of it i'm sick of seeing the headlines i'm seeing a lot of youtube videos with the same headlines too and it's like no 
<laughs> this isn't how this is going to work, at least for a long time. And so the biggest thing is all of the money that people are throwing, all those dollar signs. Look at people making millions, hundreds of thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars off of this one sale. Oh my God, everybody get in on this. Get your NFTs. Hurry up. It's going to be great. It's just like the internet. When the internet came out, it's going to be huge. Like, no, no. If you look at every single sale that people are having in the headlines, there's something that they all have in common. And that's because they have a lot of clout and are famous already, right? Your average celebrity can sell a random sketch that they did in Procreate in 15 minutes for thousands of dollars because they're celebrities. The biggest, most popular guy, Beeple Crap, has been doing work publicly and growing in clout and audience and skill for the past over 10 years, well over 10 years. And he's been doing super controversial political stuff on top of that. So that even increases his awareness a lot more. And now he's doing NFTs. And that is why he's able to sell them for a ton of stuff because or a ton of money because he has a ton of work and he's been putting stuff out there every day, literally every day for over 10 years. Do you have that kind of clout? Do you have that kind of popularity? Probably not. There's also a headline I saw about the Nyan Cat. The original creator of the Nyan Cat sold that for a lot of money. Why do you think that happened? Because it's the original creator. If you try to make some easy, simple little sketch, it's not going to sell for nearly as much money if it sells at all. I want you to be aware of this. Every single thing that you see in the headline is popular. It's popular beyond the artist's skill level. It's popular because they have clout. It's popular because they have fame. And that's something that I always talked about in why anyone would ever care about your work. It's the number one thing. Fame, clout is something that is going to always make you able to sell your work. And to put this in comparison, yeah, I might be at, I'm probably going to be a really close, if not at 500,000 subs on YouTube right now. That's not going to make a damn difference. I guarantee you, unless I really shout and scream, on my social media and I tried, I'm not going to make a, a decent sale on here. Right. So the, the artists that I've actually, I've only seen one artist come forward, um, with their sales and their success with, um, NFT so far, that's not super huge and famous. And that's Noah Bradley. I think he has a video that I watched, um, to help me kind of get well, amongst a lot of videos to help me get an understanding of it. And he's made several thousand dollars and, Again, like he's very well known in a specific industry within the art industry. You know, he's you he may not have as many subs as me because, you know, subs don't matter. <laughs> not that you guys don't matter. I love you guys. But that whole number is not something that you can just, you know, walk into places and pretend like you're 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 the shit. And you know everything um, and you're worth everything. But he's got a lot of clout. He's got a lot of artwork that he's done for really important stuff and things that people are really passionate about. And that's why I'm really assuming here, but I'm pretty confident that's why he's able to make thousands of dollars. Guarantee you, I wouldn't make nearly that much at all. The second thing I want to talk about is the fact that it's a bubble right now because of this hype. It's going to eventually pop. This pipe is going insane, is going everywhere. And I, if you're not aware of it already, people are interested in it because they want to make a quick buck, like not even digital artists. People see this as just a new way to really make money, just like how people are now trying so hard to scalp all of these different um, entertainment uh, products in order to resell them because they're in high demand because people are you know, quarantined in their homes. So eventually what's going to happen is because all of these people are trying to populate the market with all of this crap, you know, there's all kinds of random stuff that's being uploaded um, and being uh, listed so that they could sell as NFTs. Eventually, things are just going to go down. And there's a really cool video that Alex Becker did, um, not Ethan, Alex Becker, completely different, you know, niche that I encourage you guys to watch. And he really breaks down why, you know, just like it's, it's basically very similar to stocks, how people are using NFTs. People are just buying and selling stuff and trying to get lucky, listing random things super high. And eventually people are kind of going to realize what's going on. And that's the really, really tough part, because when that happens, everything is going to fall way harder than it does on the, on the stock market, because you can't kind of distribute your things evenly. So I'll try to break this down when you buy 
an NFT, you buy a single product, right? You buy it for a certain amount of money. When you buy stocks, you buy a lot of them, right? Some stocks are super expensive, but still you buy a ton of stocks and that's where your value is when you start selling them back um, and you make money, a percentage back on every single stock you have. Well, NFTs are already hella expensive. They're 50,000, 100,000 and up, you know, millions. Some NFTs are just the individual thing or the package or the, the collection are extremely expensive. So if you're trying to sell that quickly back because you're worried that everything's going to drop, you're going to start undercutting everybody and then people are going to lose a lot of money. Whereas in the stock market, you probably have hundreds of a certain stock or several of a certain stock and you can kind of reduce the price of them collectively a little bit and you're not going to lose that much. So keep that in mind. And like I said, there's along with all the people who are just uploading frequently to the market and saturating it. Honestly, it's going to it's going to become like the t-shirt market right now. If you don't if you're not already aware, if you're worried about people stealing your artwork on a t-shirt or something, you have no idea how deep that goes. There are so many t-shirts that sell for super, super simple designs. And as soon as something kind of picks up, everybody copies it because you good luck trying to copyright a simple t-shirt design that has like one word on it. People immediately start throwing up t-shirt designs and as soon as anything remotely um, you know, controversial and or sensational happens. I'm sure there's somebody out there who made a hundred grand because they released the first t-shirt that caught on that had the words George Floyd on it last year. I guarantee you there's somebody who had that, you know, there's for every little thing that happens, people just spam t-shirt designs, hoping something sticks. It's, it's ridiculous. And that's kind of how this NFT market is going to be. I encourage you to look it up. There's so many videos on trying to help people navigate their designs getting stolen and it's it's really next to impossible because these designs are just so so simple it's gonna be difficult for you to try to report all of these hidden random stores trying to copy your design another thing i want you all to be aware of is that your audience for nfts are limited to people who have ethereum which is the main type of blockchain you know there's bitcoin but then now there's nft i think it's the second most popular one and nobody can buy your work unless they have Ethereum. And so you have to trust that all of your fans are going to just go get Ethereum wallets. I still don't really have one right now. So, yeah, it's your market is very limited. You need collectors, people who will buy anything that you have just because you have it. You need people who are obsessed with your work, not let alone fame. You just need those types of fans if you want to actually make money from NFT and I am not even sure if I have a single one of somebody like that. So if you're worried, if you're, you know, your average artist online, you can be making plenty of money doing commissions and all these other things. But you really need that clout and that popularity to really make money off of this kind of stuff. Because if you don't, no one's going to go to this effort right now. It's a very limited, limited market. If you're selling your artwork and you can buy it with currency that can be converted online easily, then yeah, your audience is huge. But if you're going to do it on NFTs, you better hope that your artwork is either beyond incredible or you have a lot of clout to where somebody is still going to want to buy your stuff. And to be honest, right now, it's kind of weird because NFTs, there's this kind of vibe of the artwork right now. You don't really see too many, you know, pretty princess girls like I did in the past really uploaded to these NFT websites. <laughs> it's all kind of this like, 3d retro wave kind of stuff like it's a certain if you look through you see a certain type of artwork is really what's kind of popping right now so i i wonder if that affects the type of people who will be successful with nfts and again just to continuously reiterate you see a lot of these really popular really well-known artists on instagram like oh i'm about to do an nft drop they're like hyping it up and it's like yeah they're going to be successful because they're huge um, another few I want to mention, like James Jean, people love his work. He's done stuff for Prada. He's got people in line waiting months and months and months for a chance to get an original work from him. So, yeah, his NFTs are going to sell well. He's got prints that sell for thousands of dollars, let alone what how well his NFTs are going to do. Another one of my favorite artists right now is Alberto Mieglo. He did a lot of work for the Spider-Verse movie. And he got that like Grammy, I think, for The Witness from Love, Death and Robots. He's dropping an NFT. I guarantee you people are going to buy that. Like I love his work and I just like noticed him realize he existed just a few months ago. So 
yeah, it's you've got to really keep that in mind. Don't think that this is this huge thing that you have to dive into and put all of your money into. Don't do that at all, please. Think about where you're at. Think about do you have money to spend? Do you have money to burn? Because if you don't know already, you cost it costs money to list your work to sell as an NFT. Pretty decent amount of money. So don't think you're going to sell. You like basically don't even think about selling NFTs if you're not selling your artwork for um, at least $100, $150 because the return will just be almost nothing. And people won't even go to that effort right now to just pay. Also, you know, you have to actually pay a certain price to buy an NFT as well. So it's it's really weird. And there's a lot of different patterns or combinations of collections versus singles and all that stuff that can change the amount of money that somebody's actually paying to the artist versus whoever gets the money to pay for whatever price um and then the price that the artist gets based off of uh the price that they had to list it already it's it's really really quite engineered for people who are way more advanced in their career compared to us average people who are not really well known or not super proficient in our skill yet and i say super proficient lightly because again it's really not dependent on the quality of your work it's dependent on how popular you are and how much clout you have right now that's why a lot of this hype is working for these big artists and really rich people because the more people get in the more the price inflates and the more that they can sell their artwork these people are selling their artwork for a lot of money but i guarantee you people crap wouldn't have made millions if it wasn't for this he would have made a lot of money but not millions right so this hype is benefiting the big guys the big dogs and we're giving it to him right i don't mean to sound you know uh like a victim like i hate wealthy people or whatever but that's really what's going on here you'll rarely hear me kind of talk from that perspective now with all that negative stuff i also want to say there's a few really really cool things about nft that could potentially transform the future going back on the idea that it's now kind of put us on equal footing with traditional artists it's really it's just solidly a really good step in the future of for digital artists we're now on our way to being more respected as artists just like traditional artists are um it's however this turns out it's a step forward and that's really great and i want people to be aware of that it's also a way for artists other you know fans and for yourself to invest in other artists and invest in yourself because at the end of the day if you buy an nft now or you put your artwork up now who knows what's going to happen to nft prices because when bitcoin just came out it was nothing compared to the value that it has today who knows what could happen in five ten years simply having bought or put your artwork up now might have been a huge return on your investment so that's still something that is worth considering nobody really knows and the other cool thing i found is that it really even more kind of creates this ability for artists to be self-sustaining i i see being an artist and in an independent artist to be much more common now and have a way more established independency from corporations um it's really funny seeing how a lot of corporations are getting kind of riled up because the nature of blockchain is that you can't really the government can't really mess with it so theoretically you could put up some fan art and uh they can't really come after you <laughs> because it's on the blockchain market right um so i don't know how that's going to go in the future but it, it has this kind of culture and it's there's all kinds of different ways to think about it creatively to where people can be independent and kind of promote themselves in their own artwork and be invested in early on and people can support them it's it kind of gives me that same vibe from if you haven't seen it already um black mirror where society is divided into kind of two um or at least i assume it's like this two factors where there's people who are producing just energy and then there's people who are producing entertainment and so everyone who produces energy just does that all day and then at night they choose what to be entertained by and the entertainers do that for a living and they kind of get to live outside and the people who produce energy have to stay in the factories and that's kind of how this is i hope it's not going to be that bleak in the future but honestly like i identify so much with the main character sometimes when i <laughs> i don't want to spoil it for you but i'm literally doing what he's doing i'm, I'm sitting here ranting in my room <laughs> about something and i'm gonna turn it off and then <laughs> uh, oh it's it's kind of crazy but it's it's really encouraging that kind of future and i think that side of it is good where people can be compensated for their creativity and see more 
comfort in that, more stability in that. Now, before I talk about some concerns about the environment and my last final note to you guys, I want to let you know about this artwork. Um, I actually wasn't intending it for it to have such an NFT vibe. It was really supposed to be red and blue, um, but I was in a Discord and we were hanging out and I'm like, oh, this would be pretty, pretty cool for an NFT. So, you know, like I'm, I'm actually thinking probably I might just put it up. As a matter of fact, I actually already have my... Uh, my first, my very first pink girl sketch up as an NFT in the description box below. So yeah, guys, like make sure you buy it up. I could be hella famous in the future, you know, like I'm, I'm I am going to be super famous. I'm going to be like this really cool artist. I'm probably going to be living in Japan, going to have like crazy, crazy outfits every day. I'm going to be like Takashi Murakami one day. Um, and if you buy this pink, the first pink girl NFT, like who knows how much that's going to be? Like, I guarantee you it's going to be everywhere. There's going to be like pink girl, like merch and bags like come on you gotta buy this right so <laughs> also i'm i'm doing this all on procreate i've really had a great time switching back to my ipad my cintiq just pissed me off recently um and if you want to get in on painting on your ipad i highly recommend you check out paper like their uh, channel sponsor i really love the product and a lot of people have told me that it has been amazing for them it just makes it easier for you to draw it makes it feel like you're drawing on a paper like screen literally and it's a lot of people find it helpful and if you get it before you get used to the glass you know who knows what could happen concerns about the environment now this is something i haven't done as much research on i've just heard that this is probably the main angle of contention i don't even know if i'm using english words right now but it's the main issue that a lot of people have with nfts but as somebody who's just been somewhat you know tech savvy people have been mining bitcoin for a long time and people are mining Bitcoin like crazy because of COVID right now. And there's been GPU shortages years ago. And there's still GPU shortages and silicon shortages right now because people are going crazy trying to figure out what they can do at home. Um, so I have yet to see anybody really tell me or provide you know, an article or something that shows how much more NFTs are going to influence the um, resource consumption that blockchain market already is doing i'd love to see that if anybody in the description has that please please show show me and everyone else um but right now i'm very skeptical i don't think nfts are making that big of a difference i think it's just a popular headline that everyone kind of found out now but it's been going on for years it's like suddenly caring about global warming when florida gets submerged underwater like the day that happens everybody suddenly is like oh my god global warming it's like well, it's been a problem for a long time. I kind of feel like it's this kind of thing right now with NFTs, but please let me know. I'm willing to completely change my stance on that if I can see some, you know, some information showing that. Um, because, yeah, otherwise it's it's already been a thing right now. And I think the best thing we can do is be respectful and be responsible and not try to spam the market right now and just try to. We all already have a huge impact on the world negatively every single one of us and we can do little things daily if you upload an nft something i remember noah bradley mentioned in his video you could do something to reduce your carbon footprint at home for the day you know maybe you uh, turn off the air conditioner for a few hours and just deal with it go take a walk you know if you for every nft you do you do something like that and try to calculate it make sure it's even right that could be something cool that we do um but yeah, that's that's my thoughts on the uh, environmental impact. And on the last note, this is addressed to everyone who watches this video, especially those of us in the community and, you know, Twitter and all that um, and Instagram. I asked people what they thought about NFTs on Instagram. And uh, I got a lot of comments that started out with the phrase, well, I heard blank. And I was a little disappointed in that um, because I wanted to hear that's not really what I asked. I didn't ask what you heard. I asked what you thought. And I want to encourage people in general, um, not just the people who responded to me. I think it's a much bigger problem that you go out there, you do your research, you read more than just the headline of any article, and then you form your own conclusion. I think we often just like to throw around, ah, your opinion is valuable. Everybody's opinion is worth it. Like, no, we, there's another side to that. Your opinion is valuable because of your unique perspective that you mix with information and research that you do. That is valuable. I want to hear what people think from their backgrounds with the knowledge that they have. So some people think it's great 
because of their own background. Some people think it's terrible because of this. And I want to hear that. The world wants to hear that. Not just rehashing violently what some headline said that you saw because you want to be, make sure you're on the winning side or the side that's the loudest. Form your own opinion, please. You're going to change the world doing that for in your own little way. Um, and when we all do that, the world will be a much better place than if we just try to just make sure we're on the comfortable side and we're on the side that's not going to get yelled at. So I encourage you, do what I did, learn about it, form your own opinion, think about your own position in digital art, think about your own goals, your dreams. Do you want to be, what kind of things do you want to be doing of part of the five the five point list I made about how to sell your artwork. What do you see yourself doing? Personally, I want to be doing the first two things. I'm selfish. I don't want to do stuff for every, anyone else. <laughs> I want to make my own stuff and have people buy it. So that's my perspective on this. And I would love to hear everyone else's perspective in the comments. And, you know, please be civil. I think we are in a place right now where it's a serious issue. I'm starting to rant now, but a lot of people who are close to me are getting very, very hurt by people who are unleashing the full animal within them when they see or hear a hint of anything that they don't like and they're not respecting other human beings um, in ways that they would probably do if it wasn't for the nice security and anonymity of the internet so i encourage you please be respectful to each other and yeah i will see you in the next one let me know how you enjoyed this video and let me know if you're going to be you know buying or putting up any of your artwork for nfts um and yeah please buy my first pink print i'm gonna be famous you know get in on it all right peace <laughs>